Welcome to Photofines. I'm your host Kevin Yee and this week we are going to get started in Oasis. This is the front area of Animal Kingdom where you've seen they've added these tall poles here to the outside of the fence I guess to keep people from poking their heads into the duck enclosure. Over to Beastly Bazaar. This is a shop near the exit to Tree of Life and it's recently been closed so they could move in the characters away from Camp Mini Mickey I guess so they could create some space for Avatar which is moving in soon. Over to uh, Expedition Everest, where as you can see, they've cut down several of the trees here in the front just after you get onto the train. From certain angles, you can actually see the roundhouse in the back. Um, I guess it's kind of a, a bit of poor theming, but they're doing it for safety reasons. They've cut down a lot of trees throughout Animal Kingdom uh, in response to potential trees falling over and injuring guests. A couple of new t-shirts. This one in particular caught my eye at the uh, Expedition Everest shop. You see the beast. Trouble is, he sees you too. Now on the path between Asia and Africa, you see uh, a shop has been changed over here for vegetarian offerings, <coughs> including the uh, edamame, as you see here on the right, and then this fruit salad with uh, lychee nuts here on the left. I don't often see the Wild Africa Trek um, actually doing its thing while I'm on the safari, but I did this time around, and it's a little disruptive, so I thought I'd take a picture to show what it's like. Now elsewhere on the safari, the crocodiles were completely absent on our visit on this particular weekend. Uh, I don't know if they've been moved out of the enclosure or if they were just absent that particular moment, but it was a, a very unusual thing, not seen it before. We're mostly here to take pictures of the final enclosure. This is the zebra enclosure, and as you can see, it's um, largely finished in, in many ways with the road and then the grass as well. The zebras themselves are not there yet. They no longer do a poacher storyline. They just tell you up front that they're building a new enclosure for zebras, and that will be the ride when it's finished. Now this is new. It's a sign advertising a Wild Africa Trek at the exit to Kilimanjaro Safari, uh, I guess trying to upsell the, um, the tour for yet more people. Back to the Tree of Life area where the uh, Kids Discovery Club zone is still closed off and cordoned off because, as you can see, they've still got these coverings in place in case the Tree of Life were to drop another branch, as well as the waterfall now being a little bit under construction. Not sure exactly what they're doing behind there. Over to Dino Land where they've got some construction going on to the side and still more foliage cut down uh, so that it's not quite as overgrown in this front area. Switching parks to Disney's Hollywood Studios. This is the outside of Carthay Circle Theater, which uh, in this case is a shop, unlike Disney's California Adventure where it's a restaurant. Uh, it's themed to Snow White because that's what's inside is Snow White theming, because that was the place in the real Hollywood where the Snow White movie was first premiered. In the Sunset Market area, this vegetable garden has no vegetables in it. I hope they address that in an upcoming visit. Didn't see any on this time around. Now this building is the former, former Narnia walkthrough. It will soon be the Jack Sparrow walkthrough. Now since this photo was taken about a week and a half ago, they've um, painted some more. What you see here as these dotted uh, lines, they're asking mas masking tape, uh, it's now been turned into tan zone, so the color is changing yet again. Switching parks to Epcot, this is taken from the monorail. You see test track under construction here. Not a lot you can see from the outside, but they are making some progress. This is the outside of the Art of Disney uh, shop at, near the entrance to Epcot. They've got a tiny little display for uh, the 30th anniversary of Epcot. And uh, since they're putting this here, I can only guess they're not reopening that museum inside the Epcot 25 hallway behind Club Cool. Some of the food and wine booths have now come out. There's one for Greece, as well as another one I couldn't quite identify. I don't really know if it's new or not. And then over to the Magic Kingdom, where this is the Dumbo area. I've not had a chance to take a picture of this yet. You can have your picture taken in a flying Dumbo. It's kind of a photo opportunity. I did enjoy that backdrop, where if you look closely enough, you'll see that a couple of characters repeat. So here's a kid with his mouth wide open and uh, holding cotton candy. Let's look elsewhere on the canvas, and we see someone who looks just like that kid, mouth wide open, holding, well, in this case, nothing. So I guess they've uh, reproduced the pattern at least a few times. Here's something that's not reproduced though. It's the castle wall behind uh, Fantasyland. They've opened this up to both sides. Now you can walk through. The level of detailing is quite high. Uh, over to the side here is the Enchanted Storytime with Belle. We haven't had a chance to preview that yet, although they have had some previews and some people have seen it. 
Just around the corner from here is the Seven Dwarfs Mine Coaster. As you can see, they've got the lift hill crested now, and these pieces were until recently visible from the monorail from Epcot. Actually, you would see them on the, the former uh, airport off to the side there and through the trees. As you can see, they're building yet more um, scaffolding and structural work here. Pretty soon you won't be able to see much of Under the Sea, the mountain behind it. Now this is a cast member costume I would not seen before uh, at Guest Relations in City Hall in Magic Kingdom. Uh, the cast member here uh, from Brazil said that the costume was more about a summer costume. They'll return to the regular plaids uh, once it turns into October. So on the way out, let's have a look at the DVC under construction next to the Grand Floridian. There's a couple of views of it. This is the parking lot across the way, and those street lamps are new. As well as a play area for Grand Floridian itself, uh, this is visible only really from the monorail. And as you can see, it's going to be themed to the Mad Tea Party with those bronze decorations. Now with that, we switch our attention over to the Art of Animation Resort. Now, this is the fourth and final wing of the Art of Animation Resort. This one, as you can tell, is themed to the Little Mermaid. And as you can see in this photo, it has exterior hallways. That's not been true of the first three sections of Art of Animation Resort. Themed to uh, Finding Nemo, Cars, and The Lion King, those were new constructions, and so they had interior hallways, as well as uh, family-sized suites. It's, it sleeps uh, six people at a time in each room. The Little Mermaid section, however, is older. It was originally built for uh, Pop Century. It was going to be the second half of Pop Century, and so it was done in the style of Pop Century. And as you can see, it features these same truly oversized figures uh, that tower over individual people, uh, just like Pop Century does, although in this case, uh, they are themed to Disney rather than just giant yo-yos and whatnot. So let's take a look around the outside. As you can see, they've got some coral type decorations at the outside of the resort itself. Uh, let's go in to follow these directional signs towards the Flippin' Fins pool. As you can tell, there is a pool here in the Art of Animation's fourth wing. We start with these decorations though, uh, the fork, and then the meerschaum, and then the um, the uh, uh, the mug in the background here, we'll see that again in a second, all kind of imply that we've been shrunk down to the size of uh, Ariel's little thingamabobs. Now I did want to pause on the landscaping here for just a second. You've got mulch, you've got uh, small rocks, you've got sand, and you've got shells. Uh, so they've gone that extra mile like they did with the cars uh, area to really make it look uh, like they've um, taken some effort with the landscaping. And as you can tell, a cast member has to sweep things constantly back into those areas. And so that's an expensive thing, and I'm glad they do it. Um, it really is a lot of effort they didn't have to go through. So there's the last couple of props, as well as the um, Prince Eric prop, which is not in the same scale. Um, if we're the size of the thingamabobs, the statue ought to tower over us the way Triton and the other statues do. But uh, this way you can take a picture with the smaller statues as well. So we're going to take a, a ride up one of the elevators here, and you can see they've got this patterned floor, and out into one of those hallways. So you can see uh, uh, what it looks like from the inside and gain an appreciation for these oversized figures. They're really quite large. Uh, and take a look at the landscaping. Not quite grown in yet um, for, the, uh, for the wing as a whole. Although, as you can see, it's got some charm to it. And I did like the way this, this one felt versus The Lion King. Let's take a peek inside one of the rooms where it's Little Mermaid themed everywhere you look. On the bed, on the walls, the floor, even the curtains get into the act. So there's the curtains and the door as well as the floor once more, one more time. And even the, uh, the table has music notes for Under the Sea. There's some more um, views of the bed and this is actually a light that lights up. I did like the way the uh, little seahorses are looking at the light as though it's light up, lit up. Now this is the bathroom. Behind uh, Ariel here is the bathtub, which as you can see is themed to Ariel's Grotto. And I've been told to look for a couple of hidden Mickeys inside Ariel's Grotto there. This is a view of that same um, bathroom, but from the outside. So you can see that the curtain itself is also part of the decorations. And from there we take um, a glance back outside again to the overall look feel of the resort. We're going to walk around these decorations just a little bit, and you can see there's a, um, a view of Sebastian, uh, which you can go take a picture next to. You're not supposed to climb on him. These no climbing signs are uh, kind of all over the resort. And over to the pool, 
where uh, you see a couple of trash cans, not particularly themed, I'm afraid to say, as well as the pool rules on a scroll, though you don't have to sign them. There's that aerial shot, and we'll go get a little bit closer to aerial so you can see that uh, it's really designed to be taking the picture we're taking right now. Ariel's looking right at us, and the fish all kind of fall into place uh, when you're taking this photo when you're standing right in front of Ariel herself uh, so that it, uh, everything looks as though it was planned for you to take that picture. A couple of uh, curved palm trees round out the resort on that side, and some more decorations as we head on our way out past Ursula, which is the last wing and the last major figure as you see over on the side here, and a look one more time at that segregated uh, landscaping. Now this is unrelated to those uh, previous pictures. Uh, it's just something I stumbled across recently at Disney Quest. This is from the 25th anniversary of Walt Disney World, the Magic Kingdom, when they decorated the entire castle to look like a cake. Uh, this is something you can still see in today's Walt Disney World. It's um, an image on a video game. It's actually a child's game where you can drop wiggling worms and so forth on a, a backdrop. This is one of the backdrops available to you. Now, I do want to bring your attention to a new book that uh, has come out. I'm the co-author on the book. It's the first 30 years of Epcot's existence, and there's a look at the, um, at the table of contents. You can see there are over 150 pages of this, as well as a timeline toward the back and an index. So what the book tries to do is show you over 500 pictures of Epcot as it used to exist. The vast majority of these pictures are things you can no longer take a picture of anymore in today's Epcot. Uh, and it comes from our personal stores, our personal files of photos we've taken over the years at Epcot um, and kind of assembled. It's mostly a photo album, as you can see, although occasionally there is writing and uh, we do tell some, um, some background information. Uh, but we're mostly trying to bring you pictures of things you just can't take pictures of anymore in today's Epcot. There's a universe of energy. That particular page has a lot more information on it. So if you're a history buff or you've got this nostalgia for Epcot as it used to be, uh, this is an ideal book for you. It's a soft cover book. 8 inches by 10 inches, 158 pages, full color as you see here. It's available from uh, Amazon for $29.99. We are going to be making an available um, version on Kindle for $9.99. It'll have the same color images, although the images will not be arranged like this on Kindle. It'll be basically one image per page, so you can see the full-sized version of the pictures uh, when you see it on Kindle. There's also going to be a black and white version on Amazon to keep the price down. Those of you looking for a cheaper version can just get the $15 black and white version when it's available. So there's kind of a wide angle view of the timeline and then the index. Just to point out, that's only part of the index actually and part of the timeline. Just to point out that there is a lot more to the book than what I've shown you here in these little brief snippets. So have a look for that. It's on Amazon um, and it's called Epcot the First 30 Years and I appreciate your patronage. And appreciate you sticking around till the end. We will catch you next time.